we're about to make tripe. And none of us have ever tried tripe. I've never cooked tripe. I have no idea what I'm doing. So this is going to be an adventure. Just trying to find tripe in Houston is an adventure, although it's a very common food. You have to go to your local fiesta and tell them you're making menudo. I'm not making menudo. But try telling them you're making haggis and see what the look on their face. They don't, they don't know haggis at all. Anyway, this is tripe, right? which is at least three kinds of tripe, I think maybe four. One is used more for menudo, and the other one, the butcher kind of shook her head and wrinkled up her nose and sort of indicated that maybe we didn't want to use that kind, so I'm, I'm going to trust her on that and say, we're going to use the honeycomb. Now I'm supposed to wash this and cut it into seven centimeter squares, which for me is about two and a half inches. I trust him on that one. Cutting board. Never use the same cutting board for your tripe that you use for your vegetables. Over there. This is tripe. Tripe is the lining of the cow's stomach, one of four stomachs. I'm not sure which one this is. Instructions say to rinse well, which is kind of understandable because it doesn't smell really, really nice here. And um, But I'm thinking rinsing really, really well is not a bad idea. Uh, kind of bumpy and looks like something that came out of the ocean. And we're going to eat this, or maybe not, because I'm, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I hope that that is sufficiently rinsed. Isn't that a lovely tripe? <laughs> yes. Lovely tripe. You can see why it's called honeycomb. You want to zoom in on that? So it's called honeycomb? Yeah. I'm thinking honeycomb might have the honey back there, too. <laughs> the other side is very tough, and, um, you know, I bet this would make a great football, actually. Why was I doing this again? Oh, yeah, because it would be an adventure. That's right. Okay. <laughs> very much into adventure. Now, yeah. Big knife. <laughs> Close up on the knife. Whoa! Whoa! I'd never go near that. Mm. I might have to rinse that again, I think. Alright, so, so I don't know. <laughs> Seven centimeter squares, okay. Hey, it cuts fairly easily. That's really good news because I really don't want to have to manhandle this tripe any more than absolutely necessary. Thinking a nice bowl with the tripe in be a good idea. Come on over here and maybe that's a little small. The recipe that I have looks a lot like um, chicken and dumplings, and I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying it until she tells me she, she likes it. This, by the way, is being videotaped by my 11-year-old. <laughs> yes. Really won't eat anything except McDonald's and chicken nuggets and burgers. Plain, much, yeah. plain burgers at that. Yeah. Wait, hold on to the expression. <laughs> oh. You know, this is an example of you get what you pay for. <laughs> so, do I get a raise in my allowance? Yeah, nothing times two. <laughs> Still nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Will you triple my allowance? <laughs> Tell you what, when this video gets a thousand hits on YouTube, and it's 
rated four stars or better? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> How about a hundred people? Hmm. We'll negotiate. All right. So I'm still chopping <laughs> tripe here, and this is this is just fat here that this has got to marinate for 24 hours in some dry white wine. I'm thinking maybe about half the bottle. All right. Now the I'm recipe next. Calls, the recipe calls for the whole bottle. But I'm thinking the tripe needs to share. Okay, back to cutting. I'm wondering, since I think my crock pot here may be the biggest glass container I have, and the instructions say to marinate it in a glass container instead of a metal one, I'm kind of wondering if I couldn't do this as a slow cooker recipe and just sort of, you know, stick it in the slow cooker tomorrow after it's marinated and get the crap out of it for about eight hours. But kid here. Yeah, so, I already cleaned that up. <laughs> Crap's as good as it gets. I'm hoping I don't lop a thumb off in this because that might just season the tripe a little too much. Yum. <laughs> touching oh, it. Chunks. You're touching it. Looks a little like a bathing cap. You know, anybody been on swim team? Does this not look like a bathing cap? Okay. Oh, man, that did not smell nice. <laughs> I'm cutting off this piece. I don't know if it's supposed to be gray, but <laughs> not my tripe. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't know good tripe from bad tripe, you know? <laughs> That's the really sad thing. You know, if this doesn't taste good, I'm not going to know the difference. So, we're back to our tripe, and uh, now I'm cutting the vegetables. The recipe calls for the vegetables to be cut into slivers. What's What's slivers? Sliver? Yeah, exactly. What's a sliver? So, hmm. <clears throat> yeah. We're not going to waste that, are we? Ten second rule. Anyway. Don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> what did I say earlier? So, we're going to cut this into slivers, which the Cuisine Art does really extraordinarily well. I think that's slivered. Whoa, lightning fast. Thanks. Remember, if you don't have a Cuisinart at home, <coughs> use a knife. A really, really big knife. <sighs> yeah, so let your parents do it. If you're a kid. Ready? Yep. Okay. Whoa. That's a knife. Can I try that? Pause. We switched places for just a second. My assistant here is going to show you how the Cuisinart works. Like me showing you how to cook tripe. He's never used the Cuisinart before. Keep your fingers out of the bowl. We don't want fingers in the tripe. Okay, they collapse. Uh, it would be better if they didn't. You want slivers, not long strips of stuff. So it'd be better if they stood up straight. Hmm. We don't got room for it again. And you'll have to do it again. It's fine. Like this. Push that down until you hear it click. There, almost, almost. You may have overfilled the bowl. There you go. Okay. 